And Sarah, like you mentioned, we got into a beautiful discussion around your book, Beast, and you talked obviously a lot about your mental health struggles in that book. Given 2020 and the incredible amount of anxiety in the air, stress and uncertainty, how has your mental health been through this? Oh, thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, it's a really good question, actually. And a few, just only a handful of people have asked me that, actually. Um, and what I've got to say is that, um, look, there's nothing like writing a book to hold you accountable to your own theories. <laughs> so I wrote a series of books about quitting sugar. I will never be able to walk down the street eating a chocolate bar, you know what I mean, or a, drinking a Coke. So um, it's kind of good in a way. You're held accountable and you have to be quite vigilant. Um, I recommend it highly as a way of, of getting the job done. Um, with First We Make the Beast Beautiful, um, I wrote that and I'm very honest about it because I felt so incredibly lonely in my anxiety and the discussion I wanted to have around it. I wanted to be, I wanted to show that my anxiety could be a superpower and, in fact, that dialogue is what enabled me to write this next book. I had to live out those practices. So where am I now? Well, this current book, this one, Wild and Precious Life, it got me dead serious about what matters. And maybe it's a little bit to do with the fact that I'm now cruising towards 50 um, and I've realised there's a number of life choices that I have made that are not regular. Um, and I talk about some of that in the book, as, as you probably recall, around motherhood. Um, it was a, a journey that was particularly bumpy um, and painful and, and it sort of paralleled a lot of the grief I was going through in the writing of the book as I watched what was happening to, to, to life around me. Um, but, yeah, I would say that, as you know, I went into a dark place because I didn't have my hopeful path. I was... I was I was very dangerously close to my deadline, my publishing deadline, and I still didn't really believe my own hopeful path. And um, I won't sort of flesh it out too much because it's at the beginning of the book where I actually articulate what made me switch, what got me uh, really truly convinced of my own theory. And in fact, I didn't have a theory until it, it hit me over the head. So. Um, my anxiety has actually been healed very much by this work. Um, Greta Thunberg, uh, I remember reading about how prior, you know, a lot of people said, oh, somebody with mental illnesses like her because, of course, she was self-harming um, and she um, is on the spectrum apparently. Um, they said, well, she shouldn't be doing this kind of thing. It's ridiculous that her parents allow it. And she made the argument in some interview, before this movement, I couldn't talk, I couldn't leave my house, blah, blah, blah. This movement has enabled me to come out of my shell and it's almost like it was the right time for a girl like her. And for me, I've got to say, my anxiety has dropped to virtually zero through all of this because the anxiety suddenly feels appropriate. You know, the kind of headspace my head goes into, it kind of matches up with where life is at. Like I think I quote a beautiful uh, Guardian writer, George Monbiot, who says, if you're not feeling distress and despair right now, then you're not paying attention, you know? And so I suppose, um, yeah, I feel incredible calmness because I'm putting all of my energy into something very, very meaningful. And um, many philosophers have said this, humans can deal with hardship. What we can't deal with is not feeling necessary, you know? And I think Nietzsche said, you know, we can, we can deal with any how if we have a good why, you know, and this has given me my why and therefore all of the fighting against my anxiety, trying to modulate it, steer it, um, live with it, love it, it's now got a context and, yeah, so very long long answer to your simple question um, but I felt it was important to articulate just how, yeah, I think a lot of people with anxiety have are actually thriving in this time, you know. And apart from anything else, we've seen the dark depths. We've been there. We have embraced uncertainty some time back, you know. It's like, hey, this is our time. We're ready to roll, you know. There's a little bit of that going on and I can feel that in myself for sure.